digital transformation is changing how we work. Across industries and geographies, we see that the combination of sensors and AI generally produces better business outcomes. We see the enormous potential of power of these tools. But with great power comes great responsibility. So part of that responsibility is to consider the negative, unintended consequences of powerful AI. Think of loss of autonomy or potential negative biases in algorithms. My questions. Should the national government try to regulate the industry? Or is regulation only effective on an international level? Do we need regulation at all? Welcome back with uh, three new questions at the table right away. I hope you are a bit re-energized for the second bit. We're going to focus on industrial processes that are embedded in societal ecosystems. Good, huh, Carlin? It's very good. Yeah, and, and the question is, what do you think of the questions? Great questions. We have some answers. I think we need to regulate everything, at least on European and uh, preferably on global level, of mm -hmm. course, because the market is global. Let me introduce the two other guests at the table. The Program Director System Integration at ISPT, Andreas de Gaten. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. You s sit here like you've been sitting here for the last one and a half hour. Well, that's uh, what you started off saying, that I should have been here all the time, looking at system integration is everything. It's key to everything. Uh, yeah, I guess it is. <laughs> yeah, so I'm glad you finally showed up. And uh, my third guest is the Program Director Industry 4.0, Social Acceptance and PTTT at ISPT. It's a lot of uh, abbreviations. Frans van den Acker, welcome to. How is it to work with young talent in these matters? Uh, great. Yeah? Obviously, we need new answers, we need new inspiration and innovation. Youngsters are there to inspire us, especially in digitization, because we didn't learn it at school. No, and, and they look differently, I guess. Yes. What is the, the difference between, say, uh, a man or a woman from around 25 and our generation? Well, maybe, I'm not quite sure, but maybe when you're old you see risks, problems, and you have things to, uh, to, uh, to spare. And if you're young, you're eager to start, because you say, well, let's not start talking, but start doing it. And your defense system is lower, I guess. There's not so much to lose when you're 25. Exactly. Yeah, that's a good thing to keep in mind. There's a, an old English saying, and I want to put it in the middle of the table, and it says, you have to maintain your garden. To start off a bit philosophical, Caroline. Because when, philosophical. You, when you take care of the garden where your feet touch the ground, this little bit of the planet, and where you, your roots are, and your loved ones are living, then, and everybody would do that, we would have a better planet. Yeah, that's true. Well, but it's more complex than that. We need system integration. Yes. <laughs> no, but, but actually, um, there's a point in that. Mm -hmm. I think what you were saying uh, brought to my mind the lecture that I saw on Springtide this year. With, uh, was it Ad Verschuur, I think? Right. Uh, and I think you were even hosting the session mm -hmm. there. Where he mentioned that economy is uh, about staatshuishoudkunde. It's to maintain the household, not just the financial part of it. It's uh, about an integral look of making sure that everybody's healthy and taken care of because only then you can reach for higher levels of developing yourself. And in a transition, well, we need everything. We just need the economy there, but we also need the society to work to support that development. And then we need young talent for that, but we yeah. need also uh, all kinds of aspects coming together mm -hmm. to move forward. And how does rapidly. the pandemic help us in this? perspective because I said to my banker when my work is finished because of COVID I still have to pay my mortgage and when the bank is out of a job because of COVID you just print extra money so the the gap between real value and economic value is broadening rapidly so this is I think in our advantage Caroline well what I learned was that uh, behavioral change is possible when you really want to have a change in your behavior you can do it and I think that's the biggest lesson we learned mm -hmm. Because we need behavioral change and we need to uh, revalue uh, some things. For example, as you said, money is not the most important well, thing. Yeah. Well being is important, long term targets for climate adaptation. Frans? Yeah, well, yeah, I think, well, well, what I was thinking is uh -huh. if you want to change, really, and, and you said behavioral change, I was thinking about if you really want a, a, a verb says, that if you want to build a ship, 
it's not that you give tools to the people, but you give them the longing to receive. So yeah. if, if together we, we have that, well, we, we, we have less focus on all kinds of tools and things, but we go together as with the young people. We want to go to the moon, we don't know how, but we're going there. Exactly, and, yeah. we want to reach the moon, and that we succeeded quite fast. Yeah. So if we really want to succeed in this transition, the energy transition, the digital transition, if you just look at the longer perspective, that, that really, yeah, that would trigger us. And so the, us. the 2050 picture of the world, yes. we have to impose on everybody, like, this is where we want to go. Research, right. With less carbon, etc. Now back to the, to the video, uh, the societal status of the industry. It pollutes and there's carbon dioxide emission and there's a very negative image uh, after 20 years of discussion. And on the other hand, the, this industry makes products, or oh, your microphone is slipping, so you get a handheld. Um, uh, it produces stuff that makes our lives better. So how should we combine the two and still go on the path to 2050? Yeah, I think what we learned as well is that the industry is, is the kind of engine of our economy. Yeah? It's about mm -hmm. jobs, jobs, jobs. It's important. And we have about 700,000 jobs in the industry here in the Netherlands. What we learned as well is that, for example, uh, the food industry is very strong. So we still have the, uh, things to eat and to drink, etc., etc. And that's also very important. We created our own mouth caps, etc. Yeah. So I think it's very important not only for the economy, but all also for your own independency. But you're totally right. I think acceptance is, is, is a very important thing because we really need industry for our own well-being. And now it's too much about pollution, so we we're waiting for very good examples, and then we can show that industry is a part of the solution and not a part of the problem. Yeah. Andreas? Yeah, I, I fully subscribe to that. I, I think that but it's two uh, opposites. On the one hand, you have a very negative image, pollution and shit going on, yeah, and then, yeah, oh, it makes yeah. all kinds of stuff we really want to purchase and we want to have and make a better world. So how do we combine the two, integrate them to a new um, outlook on the industry? Well, so I, I think on the one hand, the industry has a tremendous challenge because mm -hmm. they have a lot of work to do. It's the second biggest challenge in the climate agreement currently to right. get the carbon emissions down with 14 megatons uh, to, per year uh, for 2030. But how to do that is actually very compl complex. I mean, you can replace a power station for a windmill or a set of windmills, but a, a steel factory you cannot replace for another steel factory no. without reinventing the, the entire thing. Um, and then the status of that steel factory in society, if you live, say, in Beverwijk in the area, it's twofold. Eh? There's a, a hospital there because there's, uh, the Brandwonde Centrum is there for a reason. Yeah. Because people got injuries. They used to get burned and because get, of making steel. Exactly. Right. Uh, people live nearby who have their jobs or, let's say, they supply the sandwiches for the lunch or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a close connection, but also they get waste from... Uh, spilling Black rains factory. and all and kinds is, of stuff falling yeah, out. We heard a lot about Tata, they are so prominently there, but this issue other industries have as well. Yeah. Uh, so I think it starts to understand and appreciate on the one hand what is the meaning of what industry is delivering to society as a value, the fact that we sit here in chairs, have all kinds of stuff around us that we use every day, mm -hmm. and appreciate that, and understand what it takes to make that, and how to make that in a sustainable way, uh, and understand together that's a challenge that we have to take up together. But how? But how to do that? Should, yeah. Should we do that? Yes. Um, that's something I'm wondering about as well, actually. Yeah, but you're an expert on integrating well, but, stuff, so. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Give us a beginning of okay, an answer. So, okay, beginning of an answer. One very important thing is to have more than plenty of renewable power. Mm -hmm. Because, let's say, for example, you want to do steel making, coming back to that example again. Uh, if you want to replace the coal, you need to have an alternative. Right. And the only alternative you have that is sustainable is renewable power, make hydrogen and use the hydrogen to transfer the iron ore into iron and then on into products. Mm -hmm. But you can only use that hydrogen if you have, can make it if you have plenty of renewable power. Yeah. So everything starts with the transition of the power supply. So you have to use the old factory first to build all the windmills to get the hydrogen, <laughs> and then in the end you can flip it around. Yeah, actually, so it's, yes. again, it's yeah, the bigger that's, picture. That's, so that's what that is what happens. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Andreas? And then learn how to how to do that. Uh, Frans. Yeah, uh, Frans. <laughs> yeah. I hope that you can hear me now. Probably. Uh, well, what I'm thinking about there's a well-known discussion. Uh, 
you have your, your farm material on table, uh, that children do not uh, any longer know where the milk comes from. True. Uh, a cow. It is the answer. Um, yeah. <laughs> just, just in case, yes. Just it's, in case. It's science at the table. You, yes, you notice it instantly. Yeah. But uh, the same goes for all the materials that Andreas is looking for. So the factories are somewhere at the, the corner of, of the Netherlands. And one of the idea is to, if the people do not come to a factory, because you can go there sometimes, mm -hmm. let's bring the process of creation, the process industry, to the people, showing all kind of cases in pop-up experiences throughout the, the Netherlands, how it is that material is being made and that we are working on circularity and all those nice things. So let's show how products are being made and that we're all together indeed using those materials. That could be a first step, start a dialogue, start a communication about the products. And be transparent, be, transparent be, honest, be honest for a change. Exactly. If you pollute stuff, don't hide it, just say, oops, exactly. made a mistake. We'll exactly. Exactly. Uh -huh. uh, we before there was a mention about the life chain analysis, uh, for instance, which is a very complicated thing at the moment. You need experts, scientists. That's fine, but that's not for for people like me. So we need. I need simple tools that explain to me this is takes more energy to create than something else. So explain to me how products are being made, bring the factories and the industry to the people uh -huh. and start dialogues together about what you want as a society. Could be a start at least. Maybe an interesting point because before you asked about uh, COVID and what did it do to us, well yeah. one thing it did to us was a shortage of toilet paper. <laughs> yeah. Because in the beginning, suddenly there, there, there was panic in Australia. I was, I was so lucky. I have a neighbor with a whole cellar filled with toilet paper. So go. I'm good till so, 2050. So. so that's where all the toilet paper went, I guess. I, I guess so. And then uh, actually there was this guy in a, in a truck crying, laughing his head off. See, look how much toilet paper we actually yeah, have. It's everywhere. But that toilet yes. paper, again, comes from a factory. Yeah. And the factories were, were making it still, so it's not like they stopped working, but still there was a shortage. But I mean, it's one of those products that comes from the industry that has a meaning. And if it's not there, it's rather inconvenient. Yeah. <laughs> so, again, it's important to have those supply chains there and appreciate where it comes from and see what it means in your life. Yeah. Um, and what I'm wondering, because uh, uh, Caroline, you, you are involved in these uh, discussions about how to make this transition happen in the industry. Is this relation with the everyday society discussed in those settings as well? And what the transition means to our lives? And how that support can be yes, taken for sure. care of? Yes, for sure. But we started with the infrastructure. Uh -huh. uh, because of course. Infra you need infrastructure to change as well. And infrastructure structures. Uh, when yeah. you want to have steel on hydrogen, you need infrastructure for that. Um, and I think we can... Um, go in depth with that debate i think it's very uh, necessary very very i think we need uh, 70 80 percent of the people in the netherlands who are really convinced that it's necessary to do it's something at the third place now of everything we find important even during covid it was 14 or something and now it's the third place yeah, yeah. So everybody finally realizes mm, end game we have to change and joe biden mentioned it all the time as one of his four topics. Because he forgot the other things. No, I don't think so. I think it's his top four priority, Adam. But it is. Oh, yes. yeah. But then again, as Andreas asked, so when did the normal people come in? We have to tell them, we have to involve them, we have to bring them to yeah, the factories. I, I, I see in my neighborhood or probably in other places where people want to change to do things themselves. Uh -huh. And this is something they cannot really influence or they don't know how to influence. Yeah. How, how can, we, can we find ways of making that possible? Well, I think it's very important that the industry uh, uh, gets its best practices because when the industry is changing, we are having a lot of impact that helps a lot. For example, in 1973, during the oil crisis, Joop den Uyl was there and he I said, well, it vividly. yeah, it was, was, <laughs> I was a very impressive. I was a it wasn't even there yet, so that was quite... And it was very impressive, but he said 30% is because of the people, but he didn't say 70% is due to the industry. So I think when the industry is taking its responsibility and they want to take it and they will deliver their best practices, it uh, what, starts what to be that, a credible story. But and what then, does that mean for the companies? Do they have the right leaders at the moment? Is there enough training to get things going? Because you have to change. And they have been doing it for 20 years, 50 years, family 
business, they just don't know how to change. How do we do that? Well, I think in the Netherlands we have very good captains of industry who are very aware of their responsibility to create a more sustainable industry, for example in the ports, for example in the oil industry, for uh -huh. example in the chemical industry. And then again they say uh, we need infrastructure, so we need to cooperate. Right. I think the national government uh, needs mm. to take the first steps now and to create step-by-step uh, step, uh, the backbone for hydrogen mm -hmm. and then uh, the industry gets the opportunity to show that they are very responsible. Do we agree? Do we have the right captains of industry? Uh, I think we have quite a lot that are really th thinking very much forward, I agree. Um, for example, are they acting uh, on it? Yes, they, they are. Just talking Actually, about it? It's very interesting because with the link between uh, infrastructure and, uh, and say, pr producing renewable hydrogen, uh -huh. there is leadership. There are companies now taking investments. Uh, it's starting investments, but still like 100 megawatt uh, electrolyzer being built in, uh, in Zeeland in the right. next five years or so, but also in Groningen, North H2, where Gasunie is working very closely with uh, Seaport and with uh, Shell yeah. and building an industrial consortium to really start implementing that. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there's forward motion in that area to, to make that uh, leadership, to, to make the transition happen. Good. So I, and this is what you, f you see in every industrial cluster, at, actually. Franz, do you agree? Yeah, but I, I, I'd like, hopefully, I'm not, I'm, this is a question and a remark at the same time, hopefully this infrastructure also includes a data infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So for the digitization, it, I think it's really... Uh, uh, a uh, 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 change agent that we are entering this digitization transition as well and apart from the hardware that's everywhere we will have this data infrastructure and we have data all around and we can use this new data in the coming years and it will be a large change and will enable us to talk about integration about value chains about where to optimize etc so hopefully uh, not just the traditional infrastructure, but also the data infrastructure is discussed, and that is something we have to do together, hopefully even at European level, because we need uh, an industrial data space policy, we need data definitions to be defined and prevent that someone outside of the Netherlands will take over our businesses because they own the data. Right. It's a good point, Caroline, because otherwise we are going to make a new world on basis of data from the old world. Yes. So this is not very good. No, that's not good. So Andreas what, are you, is what are you going to do about that? Well, first of all, we said... See, I shove it just... Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And I try to shove it a little bit to Andreas, but my answer is from uh, Tiki, yeah, that, that we need to invest in that as well. Um, when it comes to the clusters and the uh, cluster energy strategies, we need safe houses to share data, uh, to do the right thing on the right moment and to speed up the processes and then you can use artificial intelligence as well. Um, but I think, Andreas, you have more to add. Yeah, I know we work in the same uh, area a bit. So uh, we set up decision support tools to, to understand basically what it means if I make an investment, what it means to me, but also what it means to you as mm -hmm. a neighbor. Mm -hmm. Because if you look in the industry clusters, everything is connected. And now it's all optimized. So if you pull out one piece and you put something else back, yeah. the whole system well, at will least completely starts fall to apart, trouble and you don't know what happens. Yeah, right. things start to, to become... Uh, in stable more, more difficult yeah. or, or maybe possible that are not there and but you need to understand what are your choices and what are the smart or cho best choices or maybe the find needs if mm -hmm. you start looking at these things together and I think tools and data are very useful to get insights and on top of that you need to really find the practice to work together mm -hmm. to come to common insights and there I think and maybe that's also a part of a transition uh, we are now all in a world where everything is about competition. Right. And uh, there's hardly any time for that left, a, is there? It's a zero sum game. I win, you lose. But the game will never stop. So if you win and the other one loses, then in the end, you people will start opposing you, or the dynamic will, uh, will co go all kinds of ways. Mm -hmm. You see now the dynamic towards uh, Amazon and Google and those also changes because it's not appreciated that they are the sole owner of all data of the world. And they're just fucking up your perspective. It finally becomes clear that all yeah. the bubbles they're creating is just total drama for making a new world together. So we have to get rid of all these uh, stupid yeah. algorithms. And, and so, so. If, if you bring it together in the Netherlands or in a part of the Netherlands, then it's all about how do we, what do we want to be mm -hmm. and, and how do we want to get 
to the point of what we want to be. How do we do Good. that? For all three of you, in, in one sentence, what would you say to the government, to the politicians, to the big companies uh, on this matter? What should they do? Make a list of no regrets and uh, make a decision about it next spring. Can you make a list for them? So that you well, why not? Yeah, please, please, think... please do, otherwise they say, oh, I was too busy, couldn't make it. But I think when we talk together here with about 20 people, we have about 10, 10 decisions to be made by the national government, uh, which are no regret. So let's start with that. So I'll keep you up on that one. So uh, afterwards, just make me the list. Thank and you. I'll publish it for you. Andreas, what should we do? Well, I have one question, because if you make the list for them, how is it going to be their list? I think it should be owned by them as well. Oh, we just don't tell them she made it, and we yeah, just yeah, give yeah, it to them. You can tell them, whisper oh, them, you should say this, yeah. and then... It's mm -hmm. very smart, it's very but, uh, smart what yeah. you say. But at the same time, yeah. when the specialists agree on no regret, I think the politicians uh, will be... Uh, uh, smart enough to follow. I think so. Thank you. Beat, beat, beat. Yeah, good. Um, room for experimentation is very important. And money, obviously. And, and money to support yeah. it. But room is yeah. not only physical, but in a general sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Regulatory, financial. Uh, but try things and see what works. And very smart and remark. Improve. Start trying things. Yeah. Better. Uh, obviously, I would say in the end, people has to make the change mm -hmm. and to innovate. So what we need is people. We need competences, we need courses, and we need young, pe young people to help us together. So the no regret is obviously to look at education and make the Netherlands a place to work and to learn. I was, for one second, I thought, let's make a, uh, the Netherlands great again. But <laughs> I was so lucky you made a different sense. But I get what you mean. Yeah, the second is good too. Yeah, let's go to Nathan. Maybe he's got a few questions for us. Yes, hello, Harm. Um, indeed, first, before I ask a question, I want to say I, I really liked um, Caroline's uh, um, statement about jobs, 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 and uh, Franz saying we need people, because at ISPT, we have a job opening. So if you go to the website, ispt.eu, you can <laughs> wow. send, send an email to info at isp.eu, and if you get a job, I get a chocolate ra rabbit. So is there, an age, is there an age limit? Or? <laughs> no, of course not. I mean, of course, it could be 18 or so. But mm. OK, back to the questions. Um, from Manon Eklenboom, uh, she asks, we hear you say that we should impose our long-term vision on the people but should we not also involve these people in shaping a shared vision for the future? For instance, by empowering people to participate and involving them in ecosystems. I feel in all the polar system coming on, but still, <laughs> is, it a, is it a good question? Uh, Short, yes, <laughs> absolutely. And the question is then how to do this? Well, we've come up now with a new concept, which is called the learning community. Uh -huh. So indeed creating communities in which we learn together, not just the students or the professionals, but together and make those, uh, those uh, places to experiment absolutely involve each other and, and work together. This is yes, what I do please. at Catapult, do you know it? It's, uh, for, yes, for, yes, uh, we know. PPS, public, private, uh, working together, MBOs, HBOs, HBOs, sounds like a television company, Focusing. HBOs, working together, lifelong learnings, and, and it's a very good thing. So, I, yes. And I have a very simple no regret as well, because we need technical engineers. We have three yeah. very good technical universities, uh, but they are all uh, packed. And for example, TU Delft has about 25,000 students now, yeah. but they have more applicants. So why don't we enlarge our capacity to let the new engineers grow? In a slightly different way, what Andreas means to just uh, expand everything Absolutely. we want to uh, right. yes. discover. There are top 10 technical universities good. in the world. They are great. Yes. Put it on the list. I put it on the list. Good. You're Thank very you. good at the moment. <laughs> no. Nathan, final question for this round. We have a question from Pin from Cape. Um, isn't the risk of focusing on the long-term visions um, that industry people will wait until they materialize and put off implementing measures that could already bring savings in the short term? Okay, well, before we answer, um, the guy opposite to you, what is he thinking? <laughs> he's he not, just sits he's not there and is like... He's not paid to talk. I'm not paid to talk, no. no. <laughs> he's thinking, actually... Well, he's, there are some other interesting questions as well, but uh, why do you pick this one? Okay. <laughs> but too no. bad you're not in charge. What yeah. about it? <laughs> if we focus on the long-term vision, yeah. does it take away all the things we can do right now? No, absolutely. Absolutely not. 
as I was saying, that if you long for the sea, you will start building the ship. And there are very long stories from, uh, from thousand years ago that people start doing things for the long future for your children and your grandchildren because that's what you motivate. So I believe that if you're really passionate about things, we will start doing it anyhow. It's so very biblical as well in the, exactly the seventh we generation to, yes. of children's children's yes. children. We, we build from that stuff, so we, we recognize that. Yeah. Good. Andreas? Uh, one second. Uh, the question again for a moment. Well, if, if we concentrate on the, the far away picture, do we yeah. oh, lose okay. stuff yeah, for right well, now? I think so. Of course, we need a, a large goal, so, so be climate neutral and circular, all of that. And we need to take steps to get there because mm -hmm. we don't know what the steps will be in 10 years' time. But I just told Franz, I looked at uh, an interesting movie many people know. Uh, um, uh, now, now I forgot it. The Terminator. Terminator. It was shot in 1983, 84, uh -huh. and it feels like yesterday, but it was more than 30 years ago. Yeah. And then when there was a problem, they looked up the phone number in the phone book in a payphone. Well, there were no mobile phones, so society was completely different. But in your mind, it's not that different. No. So 30 years from now, look, keeping in mind what 30 years ago was, start looking at movies from 30 years ago. They're uh -huh. very popular anyway these days. Yeah and think, so if that is what situa the situation was then, 30 years is not that far away. And how do we get there? Well, we're in step the biggest step step intelligence step. revolution ever. So it might be quite different. There's the Internet be, of it Touch it's... coming. Did you hear about it? Nope. Well, it's, it's coming, Internet of Touch. Wow. So yeah, yeah. so you can actually feel what anybody, it's, it's very good for the porn industry as well. Mm -hmm. of, course, of, touch. of course, of course. Aside very from that, so, yeah. but I, I know your point. It's, no, no, it, the whole uh, world wouldn't change that much. So No, so the, the, the main thing is we, it's hard to imagine what it will look like. It will be very different, but it will go gradually and we have to move now. That, good. That's very important. It's a very good final remark for this yes. round. Thank you, three, and for being here. Run off to your next uh, appointment and uh, make the list. I make the list. <laughs> Promise. In March it will be finished. <laughs> no doubt there's a virtual applause for the three of you. And let's switch to our focus.